and photographs librarian for Moreland Spengarn Research Center under the Manuscripts Division. And essentially I am a librarian slash archivist of this wonderful collection of um, prints and photographs. It's over a quarter million images and artifacts from the African American history and African American diaspora. So we have things for like uh, Richard Allen's portrait, which is a special favorite of mine, one of the only images of Reverend Richard Allen of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. We have some of the first images of Frederick Douglass. We have images from two photographers, Maurice Sorrell and Clifton Cabell, that worked for Ebony and Jet, chronicling the 1960s, 1970s um, here in our collections, among many other things. He said, well, I'm going to give you an assignment, your first assignment. Put your camera on the shelf. I want you to go to Julius Garfinkel store, buy yourself a top coat. There's a restaurant directly across the street, and then there's a motion picture house down the, in the same block. So to make the story short, each one of them gave me short shrift. I, uh, I didn't get a coat at, at the department store. When I went to the restaurant, the man said, don't you know a nigger can get in the movie house? That's the way it was. So I was astounded. And I went back, and Roy saw me walk in, and he smiled. He said, well, how did it go? <laughs> I said, well, I think you know how it went. He said, yeah, what are you going to do about it? I said, I don't know. What do I do about it? He said, well, what did you bring your camera down here for? Just like that. I said, oh. So he left, and the only person left in the building was a black woman, a charwoman, who was sweeping the floor and mopping. So I introduced myself. She told me her name was Ella Watson, and I asked her if I could photograph her. Photograph me like this? I said, yes. I had really thought of Grant Wood's picture of the American Gothic. I put a broom in one hand, and a mop on the other, and told her to look directly into the camera. And I realized uh, from the reaction of people that the camera could be a, a very powerful instrument against discrimination, against poverty, against racism. Black photographers have been around as long as photography has been around. So what black photographers offer to the black community is essentially what white photographers offer to their community, which was a way to chronicle the history and capture families, capture African-American life here in the United States. Some of the first popular images of African-Americans were essentially those portraits, those family portraits. When you think in terms of um, things that are widely available with the Library of Congress or those Civil War images of those soldiers their families and things like that where people sat and they showed just who they were people who could afford it and then you see African Americans outside of the studio but still looking at, at just what life was for a black person here in the United States so it almost serves as a historical record of what life was like and it allows for black people who were traditionally marginalized in our history and not in our culture as Americans to kind of stand out and make themselves known and have a record for themselves and their descendants for posterity's sake. Yeah. As black photographers got more light 
got more um, exposure. They are able to show blacks in a more positive light, in a more authentic light, if you think in terms of what Gordon Parks does with with Harlem. If you think in terms of what Van Der Zee does with Harlem, um, and I'm picking on Harlem because those are very popular images, um, particularly in, in black photography, but just to show urban life or for African Americans to see, okay, this is exactly this is who we are and this is what we look like. And it can be rough and it can be difficult and you can see the poverty, but you also can see the beauty in these different shots and these different individuals. You also get to see a more positive image of African Americans as a subject. You think in terms of vaudeville and blackface and you think in terms of those not sort of black exploitation, we move away as we're moving away from that. We're just seeing real people that just happen to be African American. And this is what their experience is, and this is how life is. And they're not stupid, and they're not impoverished, and they're not to be ridiculed, but they're just people living, and they're human beings, and they have a lot to contribute and a lot to give.